When you've got a night game in Lincoln, the day is left to tailgate. And get ready for conference opening football as the Nebraska Cornhuskers are home to take on the Illinois Fighting Illini in the conference opener for both. BTN presents Big Ten Conference football, and tonight, the unbeaten Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the 3-1 Illinois Fighting Illini in the Big Ten Conference opener. Good evening, everybody. Alongside Chuck Long, I'm Kevin Kugler. Great to have you with us tonight. We don't know what's going to happen in this game, obviously, Chuck, but one thing we do know, we're going to see two of the most dynamic running backs in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, two great running backs on display tonight in the Big Ten, starting with Heisman Trophy candidate Amir Abdullah for Nebraska. A great combination of power and speed. On the other side for Ill the, uh, Illini, Josh Ferguson, not only a good rusher, but great out of the backfield as a pass receiver. Nebraska getting ready to take the field in one of the great traditions in all of college football. The tunnel walk is about to happen here in Lincoln. And Bo Pelini and the Huskers in their alternate uniforms tonight, making their way out onto the field. the third member of our crew, Rebecca Harlow, standing by with Bo Pelini. Thanks, Kevin. Coach, with all of the hype surrounding Abdullah, your quarterback's been able to fly under the radar just a little bit, but how has his versatility made this a top-10 offense in the nation? You know, I think he's he's played well. He's gotten better week to week. He's uh, been real efficient, and he's managing our offense, and that's the that's key. we got to be efficient to move the sticks continue, you know, uh, consistently, and that's what we've been doing. Very last-minute quarterback switch for the Illini. How, if at all, did that affect your game plan? Uh, well, you know, we'll just have to see what they come out and do, you know. We practice against what their offense is going to do, whoever they put back there. We got to, if they do something different, we'll be ready to adjust. Thanks, Coach. Good thank you. Kevin. All right, Rebecca, thank you very much. She mentioned the quarterback switch. Riley O'Toole will start. We'll talk about that in a moment, but other keys for Illinois tonight, Chuck. Well, they have to get off to a faster start. They've only scored 16 points in the first quarter compared to 59 points in the fourth quarter. They have to get off to a faster start against this good Nebraska team, especially at home for Nebraska. Then they have to tackle on first contact. Amir Abdul is the best in the country at yards after contact. They have to get him down on first contact and all of their playmakers on first contact to have a chance in this football game. Our Auto Owners Insurance impact players first for Illinois when they're on offense. Well, Geronimo Allison, a, a, an excellent junior college transfer, first year, has already made an impact. Big, tall receiver. Mike Dudek, a freshman. Reminds me of Wes Welker. They'll move him around in the slot formation to get him open. Randy Gregory on defense. Illinois is going to have to double-team him in their protections in order to keep him at bay. 
And for Nebraska, they will have the football first and their impact player. Well, Tommy Armstrong's having a heck of a year this year. He's leading to all Big Ten quarterbacks in rushing as well. He will play a big factor in both areas of passing and rushing. Jordan Westerkamp, if they double Kenny Bell, the great receiver, look for Jordan Westerkamp. They have a great day today. He'll be one-on-one -on -one all day. D'Angelo Bentley, their lockdown corner against Illinois. Already in his career has a punt return, kick return, interception for six points. You saw Bo Pelini with Rebecca Harlow a moment ago in his seventh year, 62 wins, 24 losses for the head coach of the Huskers, whose team is now the only unbeaten team left in the Big Ten Conference and a big smile on the face of Tim Beckman. His team has been awfully resilient this year, behind in fourth quarters in three games that they have all come back to win at three and one on the season. And Nebraska will receive. Illinois won the toss. They elected to defer. David Reisner, who has taken over as the kicker, will kick off. And we are underway under the lights in Lincoln. And the kickoff through the end zone. The touchback will bring it out for Nebraska. And there's Tommy Armstrong. Leads all Big Ten quarterbacks in rushing coming into play this weekend. And the sophomore 11 and 1 as a starting quarterback. And a far cry from where he was a year ago against this same Illinois team in just his second start, Chuck, a year ago. Well, you always are better in your second year from your first year as a starting quarterback. And he certainly showed that already this year. You mentioned the rushing yards. They're hitting it. They're getting him the ball about 10 times in the run game a game, which is perfect for Tommy Armstrong. He's got Amir Abdullah behind him on first down from the 25-yard line. And the first carry for Amir and a little bit of running room. Amir Abdullah into the secondary and caught at the 46-yard line. 21 yards for Amir Abdullah. And on first down, he nets the Huskers a first. And there's a slow start. I've talked about Illinois. They have to be able to control Amir Abdullah. He's so quick with great vision in the hole. Nice game. First down at the 46-yard line. Amir again picking his way forward, and he's into Illinois territory at the 46 to Jazz Woods and T.J. Neal on the stop, but nine more for Amir Abdullah. When I watch Illinois' linebackers, they, they, they jump on the ball too quick. They got to read their keys better and stay at home. They get a little itchy, and that's why Amir Abdullah found some yardage. Nobody in the country has more rushing yardage on first down than Amir Abdullah. Three carries on three now first downs and Abdullah with another first down takes it down to the 31 yard line T.J. Neal, Zane Petty 15 yard game the grass is going fast tempo right now they're just getting hats on everybody one on one blocks and Illinois is not getting off their blocks right now they have to work to get off the blocks to make tackles on the running backs for Nebraska Amir Abdullah to the sidelines Imani Cross in first and 10 at the 31 yard line Illinois playing a lot of man coverage now, trying to lock down on the outside to get extra defenders in the box. Play clock at five, the low snap. Armstrong to the air, all day to throw, looking deep for the end zone, the pass is incomplete. Wanted Alonzo Moore and Amir Abdullah. We saw him start off the Huskers with such a burst. Three terrific carries, 45 yards of the all-purpose yardage. He passed with Johnny Rogers last week to move into the top spot in Nebraska history. Some pretty rare air for Amir Abdul. Pretty good company. Second down and 10 with Cross behind Armstrong. Cross. The 16-yard line. 15 more on the ground this time from the junior Imani Cross. Zane Petty with the stop. Just an off-tackle play. Outside zone, they call it. Everybody grab a man on the offensive line and push him back. And right now, this Nebraska offensive line is mauling Illinois right off the ball. Having their way with them at this point in time. Oscars have scored a touchdown on the opening drive in three of their four games. They're in the red zone. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. Amir Abdullah back in off the bench. And Abdullah trying the middle. Burrows down near the 12-yard line. A four-yard gain for Amir Abdullah. He's, he set, has a great blend of power and speed. You saw it's a minimal game, but you see the power and the leg drive.
drive by Amir Abdullah. And he has quickness and speed on top of just an all-around back. Problem for Illinois this year, defense in the red zone. Opponents have scored on all 17 trips that they've made against Illinois' defense into the red zone. From the 12, second and six, Abdullah again. Clemens number 99 just get pinned inside and you can see a huge hole right here see the huge hole right there that gap Jared Clemens got to fill that gap he's got pinned inside huge hole for Nebraska 12 yard touchdown run for Amir Abdullah five carries 60 yards on that drive for Abdullah. All the yardage coming on the ground for the Huskers in that 75 yard scoring drive. Nebraska kicking off with Angelo Bentley, two yards deep. He's dangerous, but he's going to take the knee and bring it out for the touchback. So the offense of Illinois will come out, but not the offense that we necessarily expected to see all week long because Riley O'Toole is expected to get the nod as the starting quarterback. We watched both Riley O'Toole and Wes Lunt go through warm-ups. There's Riley O'Toole, the senior from Wheaton, Illinois, making his first start since Nathan Schillhouse was injured in 2012 when he started against Charleston Southern at Arizona State. Well, Riley's a veteran quarterback. Not a lot of starts under his belt, but he is a veteran. He's been in games before. He's got Josh Ferguson to his left on first down at the 30-yard line. And Ferguson to carry down to the 33-yard line as we check in with Rebecca. Kevin West Lund is on the sideline and he is available to play tonight still. Now here's what we know. He got sacked last week versus Texas State injuring the right leg. He went through practice Wednesday and Thursday. The team believed he would be ready to play tonight. However, the recovery was not as fast as expected. Lund told me after warm-ups that he was getting better. But Coach Beckman told me right before tip here, he said the main concern was bearing weight on his right planting leg. Beckman made it very clear that the Illini would air. You're in the play. Holding. Offense number 68. Then you're on penalty. You face second down. Simons Vianovic. Thank you, Rebecca. That eliminates a very good play from Bill Cubitt's offense to Josh Ferguson. This hold brings it back. See the left left tackle here try it just tackled him tackled Gregory that's a one on one combination they don't want with Randy Gregory they need to help him second and 17 O'Toole looking deep down the near sideline and the catch is made in Nebraska territory at the 41 yard line welcome back Geronimo Allison he missed last week with an injury and the big play receiver strikes early for Illinois and that's a great throw from Riley O'Toole good rhythm good timing kept it outside near the sideline away from the defender perfect throw hard to defend that at the 41 of Nebraska Ferguson big hole Ferguson with a stutter step and he is gone Josh Ferguson, 41 yards, and Illinois, an extra point away from tying it up. And that's the start Illinois was looking for. They haven't had that. Just a little inside zone, and there's no 
Mike linebacker. There's no linebacker at all on that play. Looked like a busted coverage by Nebraska. There's just nobody there. That's that's just easy walking for Josh Ferguson. And we said Nebraska made it look easy on their opening drive. Illinois with some relative ease getting down the field against Bo Pelini's defense. Now Illinois lining up before they shift back for David Reisner. And we're tied at seven very early in this first quarter and some offensive explosiveness from those two running backs. First Amir Abdullah, now Josh Ferguson, 41 yards to tie it up. And Nebraska tied up at seven apiece. 11-24 remaining first quarter. Kevin Kugler alongside Chuck Long with Rebecca Harlow on the sidelines. A 7-7 ball game. And the two running backs that you knew were going to play big in this game or had to for these two teams to be successful certainly have. Amir Abdullah with a touchdown on Nebraska's opening drive. Josh Ferguson answers with a 41-yard touchdown run of his own. So far so good by both offensive coordinators to use the best players on their team, which is their running backs. You saw it already on both sides leading to scores, as you said, Kevin. Illinois with a starting quarterback change tonight as that kickoff goes through and out of the end zone. But before it got to the goal line, it went out of bounds, so the flag is down. And Nebraska's going to have excellent field position to start off this drive. You have all that field to kick, and you kick it out of bounds. <laughs> Drives coaches crazy. Because you get great field position off of that. You're just joining us. This has already happened in this ballgame. Nebraska marched it down the field. Amir Abdullah taking it in for the touchdown. 75-yard drive for the Huskers. And then Illinois goes 80 yards. Josh Ferguson, 41 yards untouched for the score. In every home game this year, Nebraska has allowed a touchdown on the opening drive. Both of those were huge holes, and they just missed communication for both defenses there. From the 35 yard line first down for Nebraska. Amir Abdullah with a crease down the sideline changes direction. Amir Abdullah with another first down. The 37 yard line of Illinois is finally where Mason Monheim and Ernest Thomas can catch up but 28 yards more for Amir Abdullah. Outside zone the other way he just picks his way through the line scrimmage he has such great vision that he can see everybody coming from inside out makes a nice comeback another great game how about the little toe tap on the sideline to stay in bounds Imani cross in right now and Tommy Armstrong on the keep with a flag down Armstrong out of bounds at the Illinois 20 yard line it's a 17 yard gain if it stands but the flag thrown right back at the line of scrimmage could be a hold here During the play, holding, offense number 56, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. It's Mark Pellini, the center, called for the hold. Check out your center here. Yeah, just takes him to the ground, and they called it. Got to keep those hands inside. The nephew of Bo Pellini. Part of a line that's... At its ups and downs in the early stages of this year. They've had to rebuild a lot of that line from last year, but no penalties on the right side of the offensive line coming into play tonight. First and 20 now. No running room at all to the outside for Imani Cross. A swarm of fighting Illini, Dewan Smoot, Jared Clements, all out there for Illinois. What they're doing on defense now is hugging the line of scrimmage, meaning they're showing nine and ten men close to the line of scrimmage. I think they feel like, hey, we can't sit back in coverage with Amir Abdul on the field. we got to tighten up our get up in the line of scrimmage and, and stop that run game. Second down and 21. Terrell Newby, the motion man. Newby with the carry, trying to get to the outside, and Newby 
Not going to find much running room. Good job by Illinois holding ground. Jihad Warren, or Ward rather, there to make the initial contact. Sometimes those jet sweeps or those reverse plays don't look good. They're, they're feast or famine plays. They either hit you for big ones or they're usually a no gain or sometimes a loss. But they open up things down the road in your passing game. Third and 20. Three-man rush for Illinois. Armstrong over the middle and it's intercepted. Picked off by T.J. Neal. And Neal down in Nebraska territory. Never throw late over the middle, especially on a scramble. That's one of the first rules you learn as a quarterback. Tommy just had to, all he needed to do is run, try to get as many yards as he can. Don't make this kind of mistake. He's in the pocket. It's only a three-man rush. There's a lot of coverage now. Good scramble out of the pocket. He just forced it, and it was too late. He could not see Neal, the inside linebacker, at all. You have to see everybody before you throw a ball like that. Illinois from midfield in a 7-7 ball game. O'Toole with motion coming across from Dudek. Dudek to the outside. Dudek able to turn the corner and turn on the Jets. And Dudek banged out of bounds inside the Nebraska 25. I love this freshman. He is a playmaker. Every time he gets his hands on the ball, wasn't heavily recruited, but works, works hard and it's like West Welker to me. First down and 10 at the 23 yard line. Illinois knocking on the door again after the Nebraska turnover. John Davis the carry and Davis caught from behind as he tried to reverse his field. Kyron Williams with the tackle for Nebraska. Not able to go lateral on this Nebraska defense. Once you make a cut, you have to get north and south against this defense. They are too fast. Davis need to get up in there and get two or three yards, not go sideways. Empty formation here. Second and ten at the 23. Stacking the receivers on either side of Riley O'Toole. Blitz up the middle. O'Toole in trouble, and he had to get rid of it. It was Randy Gregory who was surging right up the middle of that offensive line, and now third down for Illinois. They want to move Randy Gregory all in, at different spots in the line to get him loose to the quarterback. Good job by Riley O'Toole just throwing the ball away. That's a sign of a veteran quarterback, even though he hadn't played a lot. That's a good, good throw away by Riley O'Toole. Third down and 10. Don't take a sack here. It's coming. O'Toole with the screen. Blockers in front for Ferguson. Ferguson tripped up just shy of the goal line. First and goal for Illinois. Nathan Gary saves the touchdown for Nebraska. Always a great call on third down and long. And offensive coordinator Illinois, Bill Cubitt, loves screen passes, especially to Josh Ferguson. And now Ferguson, as Illinois hurries it up to the line, Ferguson down to the one. Nathan Gary on the tackle, and it's second and goal. And Illinois is going fast. They average about 23 seconds in between plays. They want to get it down to 18 seconds. Yeah, Bill Cuba told us this week, we want to go faster. Ferguson, in trouble on the handoff, and it's thrown for a loss. Penetration from Zaire Anderson, and there was a little confusion between O'Toole and Ferguson. Yes, and this is what happens when you go fast sometimes. You don't always get on your blocks because you don't know where the defense isn't lined up yet. So sometimes you will take a lost yardage play when you go so fast, especially in the run game. 13 scores and 17 trips into the red zone this year for Illinois. And they're going to talk this one over a timeout taken by the Fighting Illini. Illinois off to a wonderful start on the road. Can they cash in here on third down? Illinois and Nebraska nodded at 7, 7.26 remaining first quarter, but Illinois with a third and goal at the Husker 4. Weeknights, join the conversation on BTN Live. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion for the guys who love to talk about the game. BTN Live, weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. Well, they're off to a faster start here, Kevin. It's what they wanted to do. 
And a big early moment for Riley O'Toole in this Illinois offense. Third and goal from the four. O'Toole with time. Nobody open. O'Toole buying time. And O'Toole to the end zone, and it is intercepted. It is picked off by Nebraska. A critical error by Riley O'Toole, and Illinois is turned away. Two big mistakes by these quarterbacks thrown into coverage on scrambles. You have three points down there already, which puts you in the lead. Do not make this mistake. He has plenty of time in the pocket, but there's seven guys in coverage across the goal line. He scrambles out, throw the ball away. Just a critical error. He couldn't even square his shoulders on it. O'Toole He had nothing and on the football. The end zone and it is Daniel Davies' first interception of the year, and what a time for it, as now Nebraska gets it back. F falling away from his throw, had no mustard on it. Bad decision. From the 20, Amir Abdullah. And Abdullah with five in the 25-yard line. Mason Monheim came in to finish him off after the five-yard game. Big thing with quarterbacks, see if they come back after big mistakes, see how they play. Can they forget about it, what they just did? The great ones forget fast and move on. Let's see if Tommy Armstrong can do that. Each quarterback now with a critical mistake Armstrong's did not end up costing his team any points. Second and five at the 25-yard line. Armstrong going to tuck it around. He's got the first down. Well, Kevin, he learned. Smart play by Tommy Armstrong, and he is a smart quarterback. He makes really good decisions. I've been impressed with him watching him on film all week. That was a smart play on his part. Scramble out, not there. He's good enough as a runner to get the first down. And Chuck Timbeck, when we chatted with him yesterday, said one of the things he loves about Tommy Armstrong is that he plays within the system. He doesn't usually generate negative plays. That's why that interception was so surprising. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Amir Abdullah looks for a crease and finds one where it didn't look like there was any, and he picks up nine yards. Ralph Cooper on the tackle, but it's hard to see what Amir Abdullah sees over there, Chuck, because even from our vantage point, it didn't look like there was anything there. Anytime there's an outside zone or inside zone, the great running backs are patient. They let it develop, and then they find the crease in between the t from the tackle to the tackle. That's what he does well. Great vision. Over 100 yards already, Amir Abdullah. And looking for more here as he gets the first down on second and two to the Nebraska 45. Zane Petty on the tackle for Illinois. And Amir Abdullah with his 100-yard night already. 18 straight games now with 100 scrimmage yards or more. This is the first quarter. And Amir Abdullah already over 100 yards. First down and 10 for Nebraska at the 45-yard line. They're slowing things down here. Abdullah again. And Abdullah caught as he tried to come by at the 46-yard line by Ward. Ralph Cooper came in to finish off. But you don't see that too often. A, a guy reaching out with an arm, Chuck, and bringing down Amir Abdullah. Ward did it. No, you did. No, you don't. And he had a crease. If he just waited one more split second, he had a crease going backside. He, that was one rare instance where he rushed it a little bit. Let, us, let your lineman set the blocks. He was a little quick on that one. Imani Cross in now to give Abdullah a breather on second and nine at the 46. Cross the carry. Cross banging his way forward for the first down. Imani Cross to the 42. Taylor Parton on the tackle. 12-yard gain and a first down. It was so hard when he put Imani Cross in there. He's really a north and south runner, a bruiser back, and then you stick Amir Abdullah in there. Two different style of backs. It's really hard to defend for Illinois. You can't get a beat on these guys. Taylor Barton averages nearly 11 tackles a game. That's second in the conference. He's been on the field a lot this year for Illinois. From the 42, Cross again. Cross breaks a tackle. Imani Cross with another first down. 
to the 30 of Illinois. He's got 12 more. Zane Petty on the tackle for Illinois. Remember, one of the keys of the game is they have to tackle the first time they make contact. They're not doing that right now. And Illinois, they're on their heels because of that. The Illinois defense, they need to start moving those safeties up in the box tighter and try to stop this run game. 150 yards for Nebraska on the ground in this first half and looking for more with Cross once more. And Amani Cross fumbles the football. Ball popped out at the 23-yard line and Illinois' Eaton Spence recovers it. Are they saying... No word yet from the officials, Chuck. He was down. Dave Whitford is our referee. They're going to sort this all out. Right now, the Nebraska offensive line is having their way with that Illinois defensive line. It's going to be Illinois ball based on the reaction from the Illini defense. Ruling on the field was the ball was fumbled and recovered by Illinois. First down. And Nebraska only had four turnovers in the first four games this year with their second first quarter turnover. And Illinois gets it back in a 7-7 ball game. Just a little inside zone. It looks like he has the ball high and tight and he just couldn't get the other arm on it. If you're in traffic, you got to fight to get that other arm tucked over the ball. And it did not happen. And that usually means the ball it will come out. And look at Mason Monheim with the strip. Great strip by Monheim. And the recovery by Spence. No question that one was out. And Illinois is going to have the football first down. Good strip by Monheim here going to the ground. That's where most fumbles happen, Kevin, on your way to the ground. It's hard to simulate that in practice. We used to do it by getting a mat out there, and as the running backs were diving on the mat, we you try to strip it from them because that's when most fumbles happen. They are going to look at this just to confirm that Amani Cross was not down before the ball came out. In our conversations with the coaches yesterday, Chuck, one of the things that everybody kept coming back to was the fact that Nebraska's done a much better job this year in taking care of the football. They had a minus 11 turnover margin a year ago. And that's does this angle tell us? Oh, it looked like it was getting loose. I think, it's come, I think it came out. Here's the word from Dave Whitman. After further review, the ball was fumbled. Recovered by Illinois. The ruling on the field stands. And so it will be Illinois football. The turnovers are always tough anywhere on the field, especially when you have a nice long drive and you're getting in the red zone and you turn it over. At least they have the long field. You're both winning. You don't like the turnover, but Illinois has a long field to go now. Just drive killers. Right down and 10 at the 22 for Illinois. Donovan Young in at running back. Young the carry. And Young down just shy of the 25-yard line. Nathan Gary on the tackle after the two-yard game. Giving Josh Ferguson a step breather. The turnovers, the big key for Nebraska, the improvement in that. But two tonight for the Huskers. Really gone opposite of what they did in non-conference season, which was take very good care of the football. Second down and eight at the 24. Man across the board. Comes a blitz. Joshua O'Toole hit as he throws. The pass complete for a minimal gain at the 26-yard line. And oh, what a hit. Yeah, Nebraska had a blitz right up the middle, Kevin. And, and O'Toole took a shot. Randy Gregory getting to the quarterback. Just a beat after he got rid of it. Third down and six at the 26-yard line. He's from Wheaton, Illinois. That's why he's so tough. I've heard you're from 
somewhere in the area. Third down and six. O'Toole with time. Looking for the sideline, and the pass is knocked away incomplete. Trying to find Martez Barr, but the coverage from Byerson Cockrell, and he was able to knock it away. And Cockrell had nice coverage here. That was a good throw by Riley O'Toole. He is really throwing some pinpoint balls right now, right on target. Tough catch, but you have, you have to come up with those catches. You got to make a play, make a big play. Dornay Pearson L. back deep for Nebraska. Had an 86 yard punt return for a touchdown at Fresno a couple of weeks ago for the Huskers. Dangerous returner. Excellent punt from Justin Duvernois. What a punt. Bouncing inside the five and into the end zone for the touchback. But that drive will send Nebraska out with no return from Pearson L. in a 7 7 ball game. BTN is brought to you by TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install TireRack. Homecoming in Lincoln. Some of the sights and sounds yesterday from the homecoming celebrations around campus. Oscars have been very good on homecoming in their history. 77 wins, 22 losses, four ties. Homecoming, and of course, 337 consecutive sellouts. Oscar fans watching as Nebraska takes over on offense again. First down and 10 at the 20 yard line. Amir Abdullah banging his way to the outside, and Abdullah tossed out of bounds by Taylor Barger as he gets to the 27 yard line. There's that great balance and power from Amir Abdullah. Just hard to get him down on first contact. Right now, again, Illinois needs to get up and squeeze that line of scrimmage a little bit tighter and try to stop that run game. Jake Cotton, the left guard, the injured Husker, making his way gingerly to the sidelines. Second and three from the 27 for Nebraska. Cotton, preseason all conference pick. Second down and three for Tommy Armstrong. Abdullah again. Patience gets him the first down at the 30 yard line. Ward on the tackle for Illinois. This your outside zone again, Kevin. Right over the right side. Over that offensive tackle and tight end combination over there. And Illinois does not have an answer for that so far in this football game. Look for a little bit more blitzing off the edge as the game goes on for Illinois. Jake Cotton back in for Nebraska. Missed one play. Back in at left guard. Tommy Armstrong in some trouble. And Armstrong will lose a yard and a half back inside the 30. Ernest Thomas not biting on the fake from Tommy Armstrong. That was a zone read, and, he, and Tommy has the option of handing the ball off or keeping himself. He just misread this one. It'll happen sometimes. The second down carry for Abdullah to the 39 yard line. That extra churn and drive from Amir Abdullah gets him nine yards. He's so strong. He carried the ball 35 times last last game. He's on that pace again tonight. And offensive coordinator Tim Beck doesn't mind giving him the ball that many times. So he gets stronger as the day goes. And Monty Cross in right now on third down and two. He's got plenty of encouragement after the fumble from his head coach on the sidelines. And Imani Cross back to work on third down. And Cross covering up. Did you see how he wrapped up with both arms when he felt that contact to make sure he didn't lose it again as a flag comes flying in? Always learn from your mistakes. And that's what Cross did there, squeezing that football. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 22. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's the only way to get these Nebraska running backs down is by the face mask. Lakeith Walls. Right there. Right there. 
Just grabbed it at the end there, and you got to let it go. Stay low. Keep your hands low. It's a 10 yard gain before the penalty, and that is how we reach the end of the first quarter here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Illinois and Nebraska started off in a fast way as the running backs hit the stage on homecoming in Lincoln. Amir Abdullah with the touchdown run. Josh Ferguson with the touchdown for Illinois. And through one quarter, we're knotted at seven apiece. A 7 7 ball game as we start the second quarter. Kevin Cooper, Chuck Long, Tom Etienne. Good to have you with us tonight from Lincoln. First and 10 at the 36 yard line for Nebraska. Tommy Armstrong up the middle and Imani Cross working his way down to the 31 yard line. A five yard pickup and the numbers in the first quarter are going to show Nebraska all on the ground 190 yards on the ground it's the first time Amir Abdullah's had over 100 yards in the first quarter and look at that time of possession time of possession for Nebraska has been big out of the first quarter although Illinois struck fast time of possession wearing him down second and five at the 31 yard line Imani cross again powering his way forward and cross still on his feet down at the 22 yard line nine yard gain Bentley and Barton in that Illinois secondary on the stop. This inside zone just pounding their way right through the middle. Monty Cross has to be careful getting his body turned. That's where the fumbles happen. But he has such a low center of gravity, hard to get a Monty Cross down. Great power with his leg drive. Amir Abdullah back in. From the 21 on first down, Abdullah the carry. That's it back. I love what offensive coordinator Tim Beck from Nebraska is doing right now. Just a, a lot of runs, but not, not, a, not a variety inside zone and outside zone. Sometimes offensive coordinators get bored and say, hey, we need to throw a pass. But Tim Beck is being very patient with his play calling and staying on the ground. Jalen Dunlap making his way off. For Illinois. That helps Illinois a little bit just to catch a breather on defense because they've been out there a long time already in this football game. Showing a lot of man coverage now, going back to man, 11 man up on the line of scrimmage. First and goal at the eight yard line. Huskers with 218 yards rushing. No passing yards in this first half. Armstrong to the air to the end zone and the pass incomplete and it's second down he wanted Kenny Bell Kenny Bell did not keep a high angle on that back pylon that's what Tommy Armstrong was telling him he, he cut off his route too short so they ran out of room Kenny's got to keep it higher on that back pylon that's what he's saying right here a little higher he cut me off too short Tommy Armstrong 0 for 3 with the interception tonight. Second and goal at the 8-yard line. And number 8, Amir Abdullah into the end zone for a touchdown. This offense is so hard to defend because they give you so many different looks with their formations. But they run the same plays. But you have to defend the formation to get lined up. Right now, the offensive line is just having a way with the Illinois defensive line. And Alex Lewis just pancaked the guy right in front of where Amir Abdullah went into the end zone. Extra point by Brown is good. Ten plays, 80 yards, all on the ground. In fact, all the yardage for Nebraska has been on the ground tonight. And a 14-7 lead over Illinois is the result. Now, Amir for high.
Wiseman is certainly a popular candidate in these parts. Chuck Long and a, another good opportunity to get into the end zone for Amir. Yeah, watch Alex Lewis, the left tackle, on the pancake block. Here on Tyson with a nose guard, he just kept his legs moving, just pancaked him. Easy big hole for Abdullah to run through. Right now, the Illinois def defenders are not getting off blocks, and that's what's causing all kinds of problems in stopping the Nebraska rush game. 15 carries, 148 yards, and two touchdowns for Amir Abdullah, who's averaging a robust 9.9 .9 yards per carry. Kickoff with D'Angelo Bentley, and he'll take a knee for the touchback. Let's check in downstairs with Rebecca Harlan. Kevin, Riley O'Toole is having a blast down here on the sideline. After that last pick, he had his hands on his hips. He was shaking his head, but you know what? He was still smiling, talking to his offense, pumping them up. His teammates tell me he's fun and a great leader. Beckman says he's smart, and that offensive coordinator Bill Cuban won't have to adjust much tonight. So, Chuck, I'm going to flip this one back to you. He's in a hostile environment, but if he's down here on the sideline having fun, that's got to help. It does. Trying to stay loose for his teammates and keeping them loose on the road. That's a good thing. At the 25, first down. Broken tackle by Geronimo Allison, and he gets the first just across the 35 yard line. And after a bad interception, that's what you want out of your quarterback. Can he, can he rally, come back and make a play? Nice read by O'Toole to Allison. Good big target, easy completion. Riley O'Toole. This starts in the 2012 season. Had an excellent spring by all accounts for Illinois, but Wes Lunt, the transfer from Oklahoma State, was the guy who got the job. Blockers out front, and then a huge hit down at the 39-yard line. Corey Cooper finished it off after it was started by Zaire Anderson. Nice little bubble screen by Illinois off the run game. Don't leave your feet. Stay on the ground. That's a good job to, to rally to the football. Just running to the football. Catch him in midair. Second and seven after the three-yard game by Martez Ball. block in the middle of the run back. Great job of playing the ball by Geary. But O'Toole just hung it up there a little too high. Stayed in the air too long. During the play, this will foul. Block ball the waste. Illinois number nine. After this to the goal line, first down. Just, just too much air on the ball and not far enough to the outside, which made it an easy pick for Gary. See the ball, look, he's going to hold him up to the inside. you got to lay it out there to, air, to grass. Throw it to the sideline. Here it is right here. He had good rhythm time. Just threw it up way too high. 
and not far enough to the outside made an easy pick for Gary. And usually when you cross the field like this, you're going to get some kind of weird block, usually a block from behind. But they don't care about that. They want to score. That was Randy Gregory who came back with that block. Malik Turner was trying to come back and make a play, and Randy Gregory with a crushing block. A 54-yard interception return, and then the penalty puts it inside the three-yard line. Not the place Illinois wanted to be, obviously. Had a good start, but now two costly turnovers from the quarterback position of Illinois has Nebraska knocking on the door. Down and goal for the Huskers. Monty Cross and not going to be able to get in. Good job by Illinois' T.J. Neal to get in there and make the stop at its second down. Try the inside zone with Cross. He's been running well tonight. And he is a good goal line type back. Short yardage type running back because of his size. 6'1", 230 pounds. Second down, cross again, blasted by Monheim. Cross still driving, and Amani Cross goes into the end zone, but they had waved him and marked him down. The play was stopped after the big hit from Monheim, and it stopped at the two. Usually they don't blow the whistle that soon. They, they keep it going, keep, keep the whistles in the pocket. That's his great leg drive, but they called him down. Nice read by Monheim there. Just filling the gap fast, which is what you have to do on the goal line. You can't hesitate on the goal line. You just got to pick a, pick a gap and let it fly on defense. Third down and goal. Armstrong on the option to Amir. plays Kevin are always good on the goal line because of the defense they're all packed in there and all you have is one defensive player on the edge you pitch it off read him pitch it off him they, these are great plays on the goal line Just read the end giving it to the superstar back finds the pylon good call by offensive coordinator Tim Beck Three rushing touchdowns in the first half for Amir Abdullah. Eight on the season. And the extra point is good. Nebraska with a 21-7 lead. 9.52 remaining in the first half. And Amir Abdullah taking flight for the third touchdown of the night. Nebraska 21, Illinois 7. 9.52 remaining in the second quarter. Amir Closing in on Amon Green. And he's well on his way to getting there tonight. Already 150 yards and three touchdowns for Amir Abdullah. This is the workhorse for the Nebraska offense. Seems to be getting stronger as the game goes, which is rare. Kick off over Bentley's head and the touchback for Illinois. Angelo Bentley is a dangerous return. You see the frustration. He wanted a chance to bring one back. Michael Heights, tonight's United States Marine Corps leader of the game. Heights, the right tackle, the senior, three-time academic All-Big Ten selection. 35 career starts. He'll graduate in December as a farm management major with a 3.24 GPA. Michael Heights, our United States Marine Corps of the game. At the 25, first down. Pass deflected and incomplete. Tipped by Greg McMullen at the line, and it's second down. Greg McMullen is the team leader in sacks during this game because Randy Gregory gets so many double teams. That leaves Greg McMullen one-on-one -on -one a lot on the other side, so look for a big game out of him and a big 
year because of the double teams on Randy Gregory. Second down and 10 at the 25. Here's Ferguson trying to turn the corner. He cannot. Ferguson was so good in that opening drive, but Nebraska up to the challenge there as Malik Collins led the way for the Huskers. Well, Nebraska's starting to get a feel for the Illinois offense right now, and they're, they're a lot more gas style than they had it. They were earlier in the game, and there's no creases right now to run the ball. This is a big play for Riley O'Toole coming off of an interception from the last series. Team blitz up the middle again. O'Toole has to get rid of it, and it's incomplete. Nebraska brought a blitz right up the middle on Riley O'Toole. He had to come back on the sideline, but it didn't look like he had enough time to set his feet and throw it. He had to throw it early. Good call by defensive coordinator John Papuchas for Nebraska bringing that blitz on third and long. We saw Gregory again as part of that blitz coming through the middle of the line. Justin Duvernois, whose last punt was 74 yards with a net of 54. It was his career long. Lorne Pearsonell, this one much shorter. And a dangerous spot. Took a good Illinois roll. And is down at the 37-yard line. Nebraska will be back on offense after the 41-yard punt, leading 21-7. This fall, a new BTN original documentary on former Nebraska quarterback Kurt Barringer, an integral part of the 1994 national championship team who remains revered for his character and selflessness nearly 20 years after his tragic passing. Don't miss Unbeaten, The Life of Kurt Barringer, presented by Physicians Mutual Insurance. First down and 10 for Nebraska at the 37-yard line. Play action. Armstrong under pressure, airing it deep. why Kenny Bell is averaging over 20 yards per catch because they run it so well that they go for the big play action pass and Tommy Armstrong throws the deep ball as well as anybody in the country and he just launched this as perfect post throw and he has some pressure so he had to get rid of that a little bit earlier but you see the arm strength of Tommy Armstrong with the defender in his face Nice play, good play action, well executed. Drew Brown on for the extra point. And Nebraska, first yardage through the air, 63 yards to Kenny Bell, his 15th straight touchdown catch of 20 yards or more. And it's 28-7, Nebraska. Heavy play action off the Nebraska run game. Watch uh, Zane Petty, number 21 here in the middle. Okay, he's he's going to bite on the play action fake. Opens his hips the wrong way. Doesn't get deep enough. He's got to get back there and cover that post throw. And because of the heavy run that Nebraska's showing, it froze him to get that post over the top. Excellent play call by Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, at the right time. Execution by Tommy Armstrong as the kickoff goes through the end zone for the touchback. Tim Beck told us he's not sure he's had a quarterback who throws a better deep ball or a more accurate deep ball than Tommy Armstrong, and that was a perfect example of it. It is, uh, Kevin. He, he throws a better deep ball than he does his short game. If there's anything he needs to work on, is his short game, but he throws a great deep ball, and that's why they favor that in their offense. As a quarterback, why is it sometimes easier for a guy to throw a more accurate deep ball than the short pass? Well, because of their offense, the way it's designed, the way they run the ball, they have so many guys that are open down the field and over the top. So all you have to do is put some air underneath it, and you'll get the completion. Donovan Young and John Davis in the backfield for Illinois. Young. 
and tackles and Young trying to bowl over Corey Cooper. Cooper finally gets him down, but a five-yard gain and some tough yardage for Donovan Young. Just playing a little pound football on the Illinois side. And that's a that's great north and south running by Donovan Young. Just gets some yardage. Got a second five here. And again, Young trying to pick his way forward. He's a yard short of an Illinois first down at the 34. It's important for Illinois to get some kind of drive here. Obviously points. Or this game may get away from them quick. And Bill Kubert showing a tight set right now. The offensive coordinator. Only one receiver in an eye backfield, third and short. Third down and one, and a stoppage in play as the timeout was taken by Nebraska. Nebraska. Well, Pelini has no problem using his timeouts on defense, and he uses one here. Be sure to stay tuned at the half for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave Revson, Jerry Dinardo, Howard Griffith bring you all the highlights from a busy conference opening Saturday around the Big Ten. 28-7 between Nebraska and Illinois with 7.51 remaining in the first half. And a third down and one for Illinois. Young and Davis once again in the backfield behind Riley O'Toole. Quick slant and a first down. Nice execution once again by Illinois as Geronimo Allison on the receiving end of that pass in front of Josh Mitchell. Nebraska hadn't seen that set before. That's why they called the timeout to play before. Just a simple one-step slant route against man coverage. As you said, Kevin, great execution. First down and 10 play action. O'Toole looking deep for Allison. Geronimo Allison able to reach out and grab it. and gets Illinois back on the board. Excellent job by Riley O'Toole on this throw. He just threw it up to Allison, who's he was tall. He's 6'4". Allison, 6'4", throw it up high to him. He's covered, but he's he has a height advantage. Let him make a play on the ball. The important thing for Riley O'Toole is he kept it outside. He didn't throw it inside. Geronimo Allison. Oh, how they missed him. He had 160 yards and two touchdowns against Washington. He's over 100 yards already in this first half here tonight. Did not play a week ago with an injury. And now back and obviously healthy as David Reisner tacks on the extra point. And Geronimo Allison averaging 18.8 yards per touch coming in. Going to add to that here. Just one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Man coverage, but he's 6'4". And he has great range and great height and great leaping ability. And he made a play. Riley O'Toole did a nice job of just throwing it up and letting him make a play. Most of the time it's going to be a catch or pass interference. But Josh Mitchell just doesn't have the height, only 5'11", the cornerback for Nebraska. And that was a great execution, just making a play. And it brought Illinois, kept Illinois in the game. They needed that touchdown to stay in the game. Longest pass of Riley O'Toole's career, 58 yards. What an answer for Illinois. And Geronimo Allison, who played his junior college ball just up the road from here in Lincoln in Council Bluffs, Iowa, at Iowa Western Community College. He and Martez Barr were teammates there in 2012. Both coming back to near the area where they spent a couple of years playing junior college ball. And Allison with a very big play for Illinois. And that felt good for Riley O'Toole. Had big, two big mistakes. Come back and have that touchdown pass. Short kickoff bobbled by Abdullah. And Amir Abdullah with nowhere to go. Nebraska starting at the 17-yard line. Huskers have had two turnovers tonight. This one they're able to get back. That's dangerous right there because you, uh, when you run up so fast to catch a ball, that's usually when a fumble happens. You're lucky to get that ball back because those are hard balls to catch when you're running so fast up to one that's in the air. Let's see if Illinois' defense could slow this offense down. Up 
the middle across the 20 yard line. Petty on the tackle of Amir Abdullah. Five yard pickup on first down. And that's what you want, Kevin, on first down is four yards. All coaches want four yards on first down. They get five there. One thing about this offense is always staying ahead of the change. They, they hardly ever gets a loss with this offense. On second down, again, Amir Abdullah with running room, and Abdullah across the 40 yard line, still fighting for yardage. And Abdullah to the 43 before he's finally stopped a 21 yard gain. Zane Petty and Eaton Spence on the tackle. Well, Defensive coordinator Tim Banks of Illinois tried to blitz on this on this play, but they had the right play call. There's no linebacker there. Right play call on offense. Big game. On the 43-yard line, Amir Abdullah, a yard, and that's all to the 44. Right now, they're just showing Lots of run. They had the heavy play after pass off of it. So look for that again before the half. But they're really setting up their play action with all this running. But Illinois still needs to take a chance up front. They have to load that box more and, and stop that run first. Darrell Newby in now for Nebraska. Tommy Armstrong on the keep. And Armstrong out to the 48-yard line, a four-yard gain. Taylor Martin on the tackle. No loss yardage plays in this offense. It's very hard to defend when they're always moving down the field, getting some yardage out of it. Now they're in a manageable third down. That's been really the key to success is manageable down and distance distances in this offense, especially on third down. Lester Camp and Allen to the top of your screen on third and five at the 48. They set up the short pass to Newby. Newby with blockers and Newby with a first down inside the 35 of Illinois to the 32. Nebraska's doing a great job of rotating their running backs and keeping them all fresh. As you see Newby, Newby's role is on third down. He's a third down back. Good little chip on the defensive end there. A little chip screen we used to call that. Nice job with the block and the chip. Fooling that defensive end and slipping out for the screen pass. Good third down call. From the 32 of Illinois, first down. Newby again the carry. And Newby with some running room inside the 25, down near the 24. Taylor Barton, another tackle for Illinois. But I like what Nebraska is doing with their running back rotations. If, they, if they're hot, they stay in there. They're not taking them out. Newby gets a big screen pass. They keep them in there. Give them the ball again. They're hot. You're getting a better rhythm that way with your offense and with your running backs. Lester Camp in motion. Newby the carry. Newby fighting forward for the first down to the 21. Mason Monheim involved in another tackle and a flag in at the end of the play. Everything was done and then the flag came flying in. Some extracurricular afterwards. Frustration starts to set in. After the play, unnecessary roughness, defense number three. After distance for the goal line, automatic, first down. That's Taylor Barton. You see Coach Beckman not happy. Right there with Kenny Bell on the left side, left of, the side of the screen there. He's pushing Kenny over the pile. Just, hey, frustration setting in. Relax. Don't make it worse. Illinois showing edge blitz. On first down, Newby the carry ran right into the teeth of that defense and he'll lose a yard. Good play up front by Illinois from Jared Clements. Illinois finally showed a double edge blitz. Had everybody up in the line of scrimmage. And I believe, Kevin, that's about the best way you're going to be able to stop the Nebraska offense. Get two guys on the edge for the option game and try to plug it up the middle. Good call by defensive coordinator Tim Banks to see if he keeps it up. Showing it again. Trying to find running room once more, and again, nothing up the middle. Austin Teitzma with another tackle for a loss. He came in second in the conference, six tackles for loss this year. Well, they found a little double-edged blitz look here. 
It's, it's created some problems for Nebraska. Now, what they're susceptible to is the, is the pass. There's no one in the back end. It's man across the board. But Illinois is just taking a chance right now. Hey, we have to stop this run game. Now they have them in third down. Now they can play more coverage. Showing the edge blitz again. Third and 11 at the 12. Little confusion, Armstrong. Not quite sure what to do. Now ready to go on third down. Armstrong throws and it's incomplete. That was a good defensive series for Illinois right there down there in the red zone. My defensive coordinator Tim Banks showing three times in a row double edge blitz. No, no safeties in the back to stop their run game. They're susceptible to the pass and they had good coverage there. Let's see if they stay with that package because right now nothing else was working. Perhaps a little momentum for Illinois. They have struggled red zone defensively this year. Come up with a big stop and force Nebraska to try the field goal of 30 yards. Just shy of 30 yards as they mark it inside the 20 and the field goal good by Drew Brown. Officially a 29 yard attempt and make for Drew Brown. And the Huskers add to their lead now 31-14. Nebraska 31, Illinois 14, 248 remaining in the second quarter. Chuck Long, what's Illinois done defensively to counter Nebraska here? Well, they have a double edge blitz go with their outside backers, and nobody's in the middle of the field, so they're saying, hey, we have to stop the run. We'll play man coverage all over the field. You gotta have pinpoint passing. That's a nice little package that Illinois has right now. Let's see if they continue that, because it gave Nebraska some fits. 31-14, Nebraska. And Brown kicking off. D'Angelo Bentley will take a knee and take the touchback. Westlund not getting the start tonight with an injury that occurred earlier in the week. Riley O'Toole so far tonight manning the offense. 7 of 13, 140 yards, and the long touchdown to Geronimo Allison. Last time out, there's Lunt, who has had a tremendous start to his Illinois career after sitting out a year ago, coming over from Oklahoma State. Yeah, Lunt, 11 touchdowns on the year, only three interceptions, off to a tremendous start. But Riley came back with a nice touchdown pass. From the 25 on first down, O'Toole with time, and the pass incomplete, but there's a flag. He wanted to hit Josh Ferguson sneaking out of the backfield. Trevor Roach had a hand on Ferguson. Simple out route by Ferguson out of the backfield, and it's hard to match up on him. Pass interference, defense number 43. Spot foul, automatic first down. Well, that won't be a surprise to Nebraska's coaches. They expected to see a lot of yeah. Ferguson in the pass game. This is just a mismatch on Roach. You know, Ferguson's just quicker and faster. And those linebackers tend to grab when they have a faster player on them. Illinois slowing it down now here. Not going as fast. At the 26, Ferguson, nice spin. And Ferguson down near the 35-yard line. Randy Gregory there to finish him off, but Josh Ferguson with a nice move to get extra yardage. That's all Josh Ferguson there. There was an unblocked hole, and the great running backs make the first guy miss. That's exactly what he did. He is quick in the hole. Illinois again slowing it down, not as fast. Ferguson again. Nowhere to run this time. Greg McMullen there to make the stop behind the line with the 33. Again, there's Greg McMullen. They're trying to run away from Randy Gregory. That's why Greg McMullen could have a big year this year because he'll get a lot of action to his side because they don't want to run to Randy Gregory's side. McMullen has already surpassed his tackle total from a year ago. Third and three. Pressure from the backside, and he's set. Randy Gregory got him back near the 25-yard line. And there's Randy Gregory, just when you think you have him blocked. They have two guys on him. He still gets through that guard tackle gap. 
Nice job of staying low and just running right through him through the crease sideways to get to the quarterback. Staying lower than the office. The office of tackle and guard. Nice job of working right in between them. It's Randy Gregory's 17th game in a Husker uniform. He has 13 and a half sacks. Pressure up the middle. Just got rid of that to do Verdois. Demorne personnel at the 33-yard line. And good coverage by Illinois. A flag down late at the end of the return at the 36-yard line. Just a three-yard return for Demorne personnel as Illinois got down there to stymie the freshman punt returner. Get a little sloppy here. Uh, the Third return. return. A little block in the back. Returning team number 27. 10 yard penalty. First down. Kyron Williams with the penalty. Trying to make the first. Here it is. Yep. Hit him from behind. The helmet's on the back. You can't have the helmet on the back. Put the helmet in front of the shoulder and they won't call it. Ever wonder what that old piece of Big Ten memorabilia was worth? Follow expert John Arcan as he hits the road, traveling the country in search of the most exceptional Big Ten collectibles around. It's an all-new Big Ten Treasure Hunter, Tuesday night at 10 Eastern on BTN. An Iowa collection for you, Chuck Long, this week on the show. Iowa toy trains and some vintage football <laughs> programs. Do Chuck Long football programs count as vintage? Here's Amir Abdullah. Amir Abdullah again into the secondary able to catch him at the 43 yard line a gain on the play of 20 and another first down and Illinois just plays coverage Kevin they just can't they can't stop them there's two the, the gaps are too big they're, they're not securing every single gap they can't get off blocks right now they need to go back to that edge blitz to stop this run game here they are playing coverage again Oscars have two timeouts remaining clock running play action Armstrong Down. That's classic pocket presence right there by Tommy Armstrong. That's exactly how you teach a quarterback. Not their step up and out of the pocket, which is exactly what Armstrong did. Found Westerkamp on the sideline with a good, safe comeback throw. Excellent work by Tommy Armstrong. At the 37 of Illinois, first down. Illinois going back to the edge now. You see both edges. Both defenders on the edge. Here comes the blitz. Oh, they're going to check out of it. Armstrong with time over the middle, and it's juggled and almost intercepted for a second time by T.J. Neal. And T.J. Neal might have had another pick, had, might have had a pick six on this one. And Tommy Armstrong just never saw him. You have to have wide vision as a quarterback and blink out in front for color. And he didn't see him at all. And that, that was a dangerous throw right down the middle. T.J. Neal had his pick earlier. Right in his hands. Second down and 10. Pressure coming. Armstrong steps up. Hit as he throws. And the pass is incomplete. He could see that pocket collapsing on top of him as Ward was there along with Mason Monheim. Defensive coordinator Tim Banks for Illinois starting to mix things up a lot better right now. He brought a internal blitz right between the center and guard. And he's starting to put some pressure on Tommy Armstrong in this offensive line. It's a good mix right now of defensive calls. Tommy Armstrong three for nine for 103 yards in this first half. Third down and 10. Armstrong again. Missed it. Fedulum and Spence were there. And Armstrong led him a little too far. Yeah, wait, wait a little bit too long on that one and with a little bit too much air under the ball. He had his hand up early and he just too late. Gave the safety a chance to recover. Just had to get that ball up a little quicker. So now the field goal unit will come on. Drew Brown, the freshman. Out of South Lake, Texas, his long this year, 44 yards. His long as a senior in high school was 51 yards. This is 54 yards 
for Brown. Good snap, good hold, trying to curve it back, and it's wide right, no good. Certainly had the leg. His brother Chris, second all time at Nebraska in points scored. Longtime National Football League kicker, but Drew unable to bend that one all the way back in. So with two seconds remaining in this first half, or three seconds now, Illinois will get one more snap. You've got a big play guy in Geronimo Allison. Do you throw it up and see what he can do here? Absolutely. You have nothing to lose. Try a Hail Mary. You just never know what's going to happen. Give it a shot. Looks like they're in a Hail Mary formation. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report is three seconds of game action away here, give or take. If it's not Hail Mary, Kevin, try a little hook and lateral. Short pass and lateral all the way down the field if you can. Three seconds remaining in the first half. Riley O'Toole is going to hand this one off. Going nowhere on the carry is Ferguson. Vincent Valentine on the tackle. And halftime is here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And Amir Abdullah and the Huskers with a 31-14 lead. 288 yards on the ground tonight for Nebraska. 196 for Amir Abdullah in the first half. Nebraska with a 31 to 14 lead on homecoming in Lincoln. Thanks in large part to Amir Abdullah who has paced the Husker offense. Nebraska leading by 17 at the break. Start of the third quarter. Where else would you be to see that? But Lincoln, Nebraska 31 14. The Huskers with a lead wind our way towards the start of the third quarter. Time for our Quicken Loans quarterback comparison. And the quarterbacks tonight, maybe not the quarterbacks we thought we'd be comparing. Tommy Armstrong, yes, but Riley O'Toole, the surprise starter tonight. Well, a little rough on the percentage, you see. Uh, but Tommy Armstrong is getting the big, got the big play to Kenny Bell off the run game, which is what you need to do in this offense to be successful. And for Riley O'Toole, he, he's had a pretty decent game, except for the two interceptions. Those were costly. They got to cut down on those in the second half, both of them. Riley O'Toole starting tonight for the injured Wes Lunt, who was injured earlier in the week at practice. It was a decision made right before game time tonight that he would not go after going through warm-ups. He is suited up in a pinch, could play. They're going to go with Riley O'Toole as long as they can. The senior who had 42 yards against Nebraska a year ago in some limited playing time in his one of his six games he played last season as we check in downstairs with Rebecca Harlow. Kevin there's really only one question for Tim Beckman and that's how do you stop Amir Abdullah and he said we have to load the box and he said but more importantly we have to do a better job tackling. He said the goal here in the second half is to try to get him down with that first hit so that he can't get all of those extra yards and as for Nebraska coach Pelini has his focus on limiting the big play and cleaning up those turnovers guys he tells me the defense had way too many missed assignments and he expects cleaner better execution here in the second half. All right, Rebecca thank you very much. Pelini looking on his team will kick off to start off the second half. Illinois won the toss they elected to defer so Vadigalani trying to get things going in the second half here, trailing by 17. And it's the explosive Bentley who will take a knee. He's been a little frustrated tonight. He's not had a chance to get the return game going. We've seen Viangelo Bentley, whether it's punt return, kick return, and coverage. He is a dangerous weapon that Nebraska has negated tonight with the kickoffs. He's had a touchdown in those three areas, punt return, kick return, and interception return. First time since Red Grange back in the 20s wow. at Illinois that that's happened. From the 25-yard line, first down and 10. And coverage for Nebraska now. Starting off the second half. Moving to his zone. Draw play Ferguson. 
And Ferguson gets three to the 28-yard line. Joshua Kalou on the tackle for Nebraska. When Illinois audibled to another play, Nebraska's defense switched from a man to a zone. So there's a lot of cat and mouse game going on out there between coordinators trying to confuse the other. First rush tonight for Ferguson was 41 yards since seven yards on eight attempts. Ferguson, nice spin. Ferguson adding some yardage now as he's upended at the 40-yard line by Josh Mitchell. 12-yard gain for Josh Ferguson and a first down after Nathan Gary missed the tackle early. Just a big hole again. Something made the first guy miss so quick in the hole with that spin move. O'Toole to throw on first down with time. Throws it short and the catch is made by Ferguson. Short gain to the 43-yard line. Tackled by Zaire Anderson. I think the halftime adjustment for Bill Cuban, the offensive for the Illinois. Hey, let's get back to getting the call to Josh Ferguson like we did early in the game. We've seen that unfold right now. May have gone back to his original first drive script that many coordinators have. Second and seven at the 43. Donovan Young in at running back. Now O'Toole in trouble, and he has to throw it away. That pressure coming again. Good coverage downfield by Nebraska as McMullen was providing the heat on Riley O'Toole. I like Greg McMullen again. He has a lot of single blocks because of the presence of Randy Gregory on the other side, and he is making the most of it. Nice job putting pressure on Riley O'Toole, making him throw the ball away. Third down and seven at the 43. O'Toole had time, and he airmailed that one in the direction of Dudek. But it's fourth down. Riley O'Toole had to be patient, but the rest of brought a heavy blitz. Looks like he's limping a little bit. Got hit. But he had a chance to complete that ball. Got to make that throw. Looks like he just got stepped on. His lineman there, Michael Heights. He locked his front leg and the ball sailed on him. Vernois. Short punt. And down near the 30-yard line by Illinois. Time out on the field. Nebraska's offense going to work again. Can Tim Beckman's team figure out a way to stop Amir Abdul? Husker fans, Husker fans please, please help us help welcome back, back to the Memorial Stadium. Two, two of the greatest players, players to ever wear a Husker jersey. jersey. And we have team members of Bob Devaney's two national championship teams in 1970 and 1971. Husker fans, the former defensive guy who won the 1972 Lombardi and Alton Trophy Award. Jersey City, New Jersey native. Homecoming. Rich Glover, terrific defensive lineman for the Huskers, and Johnny Rogers, of course, Heisman Trophy winner. Rich Glover winning the Outland Trophy, the Lombardi in the College Football Hall of Fame. Johnny Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner, both part of Bob Devaney's national championship teams in the early 70s. And standing by with a Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Rogers, is our Rebecca Harlan. Here he is, the Jet. He just got a a standing ovation here in the stadium but you were here last week when Amir Abdullah broke your record for those all-purpose yards what was that like for you knowing how much you respect his game well I figured the records are made to be broken and uh, I think it's really uh, gives me a lot of credit for for Amir of that caliber to, to break that record and to set the bar high uh, for others to come along and uh, it could happen for a nicer guy and, it's a step towards the Heisman Trophy. You said when you won the Heisman, the, one of the reasons why was your teammates, other guys stepping up. So what else about this Nebraska team do you like? Well, I like the fact that I think they're stepping up for uh, Abdullah. Uh, we can't win. Uh, we, we can't win Heisman trophies if we don't have other people that are all Big Ten or are all Americans. And people are winning other accolades and awards as well. It's a team. The Heisman Trophy is a team award. You just give it to the guy who's the most important on your team. But you have to have the other team. You don't win Heisman trophies by yourself or national championships. It's always in conjunction with others that you make your greatest accomplishments. And teamwork truly does make your dreams work. Thanks for joining us. All right, Rebecca, thank you. Kevin. 
All right Rebecca thank you very much Johnny the Jet Rogers one of the most iconic figures in Nebraska football history part of the game of the century his punt return living in local and national lore in that game of the century Nebraska and Oklahoma many years ago and off up the middle to the 48 yard line and then driven back of Monty Cross. Illinois saying he fumbled the football, pointing their way, but the officials blowing this one down, saying it'll be Nebraska's. As Johnny Rogers, a few years ago, racking up the yardage and the big moments for Nebraska football. And I grew up watching Johnny Rogers. I remember those epic Oklahoma Nebraska battles every Thanksgiving. Our house would shut down to watch that game. Classic games between those two teams. Second down and six at the 48 yard line. Armstrong on the keep, trying to pick his way forward, and he stumbles ahead for a couple of yards to the 46 yard line. We're seeing some quarterback run game start to develop for Nebraska. And Tommy Armstrong is really making good decisions with the quarterback run game. Third down and four. Nebraska four for seven on third down tonight. They entered play tonight converting on 50% of their third downs. Cross motioning out of the backfield. Armstrong to the air and Armstrong with a first down completion to Kenny Bell. Just a little slant route over the middle against Illinois man coverage. Just one on one with Kenny Bell. And he just, he's so strong to the catch point, it's hard to defend that little slant route for an easy conversion on third down. Illinois playing a lot of zone right now. Armstrong back to the air again. Back to Kenny Bell, and Bell picking his way forward near a first down. This is a run-pass option here. And if Tommy Armstrong sees numbers, meaning Nebraska has more numbers than Illinois, he's going to throw the ball outside. Nice game with Kenny Bell again, being a big target, a powerful receiver after the catch. Tough task for this Illinois defense. A lot of weapons for Nebraska offensively. Illinois needs to do something on defense. So they're playing a lot of zone. Here they come with a showing a blitz. Armstrong changing things up. Second down and a yard at the 32 yard line. Cross in trouble in the backfield. Breaks free. And Amani Cross close to a Nebraska first down. Taylor Barton finally able to get him down. The initial hit from Clements. And Cross was able to wriggle free. That's where Illinois head coach Tim Beckman said they got they have to tackle better. That's the first contact hit. You got to get him down. Looks like he broke about three or four tackles on that run to get the first down. He had, he had it, they had him for a lost yardage play. One of your keys at the top of the broadcast had the tackle on first contact. They did not there. From the 30 yard line on first down. Up the middle, powering forward Zane Petty with the tackle of Imani Cross. Not magic football here, Kevin. Just right up the middle. Just showing their power as an offensive line against the Illinois defensive line. And Illinois, again, is having trouble getting off blocks. Have to change that line of scrimmage with some blitzing. Not doing it right now for Illinois. Terrell Newby in the backfield now with Armstrong. Armstrong on the keep. Armstrong exploding down inside the 10-yard line to the nine. 17-yard burst for Tommy Armstrong. Viangelo Bentley with a tackle. First and goal, Nebraska. Well, Tommy Armstrong must have had a tip from the Illinois defense. Could the Illinois blitz from the left side of the screen there? And he ran a play audible to a play to the other side. So he must have saw a tip there in that secondary. Good job by Jake Cotton, that, office, that offensive line. A uh, little confusion there. This play stopping before it started and a flag throw illegal contact defense 
Vamos. A rather chagrined look on the face of head coach Tim Beckman. Defensive line need to watch the ball and not listen to the quarterback's cadence. Watch the football. Especially on the interior defensive line. Should be easy to watch that ball, but oftentimes they will jump and listen to the quarterback. First down and goal. Running room into the end zone for the touchdown. Nothing real fancy on that drive for Nebraska. Just running backs right up the gut. Inside zone play. Man on man blocking. First step for positioning for the offensive line. Next step for power. Second step for power. And then you see the power of Amani Cross. Powering his way into the end zone. Nothing fancy on that drive. Got a good lead block from his fullback, Andy Janovich. Clearing the road for Amani Cross. 15 carries, 89 yards, and the third rushing touchdown of the year for Amani Cross. 38-14, Nebraska, 7.56 remaining in the third quarter in Lincoln. Kevin Kugler, Chuck Long, Rebecca Harlow, our BTN crew. Nebraska, 125 years of football with five national championships, 11 undefeated seasons, 50 bowl appearances, and 110 first-team All-Americans. Certainly another couple of guys that you'd look at on this team and say might add to that All-American number. It's a great program for... Long, long time. It's all the consecutive sellouts. It's an amazing stat. Here's Bentley. Going to have to stay in the end zone once more. It's time for tonight's John Deere Gator game changing performance. And the Gator game changing performance belongs to that man, Amir Abdullah, who is on the bench right now with the rest of his offensive mates. The trainers a little while ago were looking at his right knee hopefully all is well with Amir Abdullah because what a night 21 carries 197 yards and three touchdowns certainly a game changing performance tonight but they'll need him throughout the year to have the season they think they could have as the pass from O'Toole is incomplete in its second down with Mullen providing a little pressure on Riley O'Toole almost a pocket pass Illinois went right back to the passing game, trying to get the ball down the field somewhat in the passing game. Try to try to flip the field and get it down the field a lot faster than they've been doing. Pressure up the middle and the pass incomplete. The blitz from Nathan Gary. And O'Toole had to get rid of it in a hurry. That was a rare safety blitz by Gary in Nebraska. Perfect timing to do it. And Josh Ferguson, that was his responsibility to block Gary. And look, you see Josh trying to get back to block him. Too late. Josh Ferguson he needs to stay in there and block that safety blitz. Good call for Nebraska. Go down him 10 at the 25-yard line. Showing the same blitz right now. Man covers across the board. Pressure late. O'Toole escapes and has to throw it away again. Riley O'Toole under duress each of the three dropbacks in that series. Nobody opened downfield. McMullen with the nudge at the end. And Illinois will punt. This is a tough series for Illinois' offense there. Trying to get the ball down the field, but Nebraska's bringing that pressure. And they had a mismatch on Randy Gregory with the running back and pass protection. And you don't want that to happen too many, too many times. The Mornay Pearsonnel awaiting the punt from Justin Duvernois. Pearsonnel at the 43 bobbles it and is able to corral it. He grabbed that with his fingertips and then it popped back into his chest as he controlled it. Husker offense going back to work after the save by Pearsonnel. and director getting some time in the stands tonight <laughs> enjoying the evening here in Lincoln 38 14 lead a little red
Red enjoying it as well. Nebraska very fortunate to keep this possession. Yeah, just right. Oh, that's a great catch. Oh, that ball's bobbling around. That would have been a nice break for Illinois. Those are hard to catch. Those are hard to field. Good news for Nebraska. Amir Abdullah back out on the field. First down and 10. Abdullah with the carry. Abdullah with the hole. Over 200 yards rushing on that carry as Eaton Spence makes the tackle at the 45 of Illinois. Outside zone play, just staying with your blocks. And there goes Amir Abdullah. That might be his final carry of the day. Could be that. Just big holes right now with the offensive line of Nebraska. From the 45, a money cross hit in the backfield and dropped. Kenny Nelson shrugging off the block and gets into the backfield to make the tackle. Finally, a tackle for loss play. They've had a couple in this game, and they're getting more this year. This Illinois defense didn't get as many last year as they are this year. Good job by Nelson. Just defeating the block, using his inside leverage on that. Offensive blocker did a nice job getting inside that block, making the play. Second down and 14. Pressure coming again. The pass is incomplete. Kenny Bell, the intended receiver, but Tommy Armstrong had to get rid of that quickly. Terrell Newby wasn't able to pick up the blitzer. And there's that short passing game that Tommy Armstrong struggles with at times. Just delivering the ball. It's good timing on the right end. Nice timing. And you should be able to get rid of the ball even on a blitz. A quick pass like that. Just need to complete it. He stepped in the bucket a little bit too far to the sideline and the ball got away from him. Third and 14. Play action. Armstrong in trouble and he's sacked. Kenny Nelson started with a great play behind the line and he comes back with the sack to close the series for the Illinois D. Well, that was a good series by the Illinois defense and, and Nelson, two good rushes in a row. They may have found something with him on the edge. Did he get the face mask? He's got that arm up in there and a release it, but two good plays by Kenny Nelson in that series. And the first punt of the night for Nebraska. That was a good stop by the Illinois defense. They needed that. They haven't had too many. You can gain some confidence oh, by, by getting that. That first three and a half. Thank you. Sam Fultz leads the Big Ten in punting average at 47.4 yards per punt. Darius Mosley, Viangelo Bentley back deep straight up into the air short punt bounces at the 29 takes a little bit of a Nebraska roll out of bounds at the 24 yard line that went right up the elevator shaft for Sam Fultz a 32 yard punt at Illinois football when we return Seven yard line. Three yard pickup for Donovan Young. Trying to get the run game going again. Let's see if Illinois goes fast with their offense or fast tempo. It doesn't look like they're doing that right now. Does that surprise you? Because Bill Cubitt told us they're better when they're faster. And we saw it earlier. They were very effective. For some reason, they've slowed it down. They need to get back that fast tempo. O'Toole on the keep. And O'Toole not able to get to the corner. Oscar is able to close quickly 
and come up with the stop. Quarterback run game, which is really not a strength of Riley O'Toole. He's trying to mix it up a little bit, show something that Nebraska doesn't expect, but they're all over it. They don't want to do that too much, but they're in a manageable third down right here. Third down and six at the 28. Nebraska has a dollar package out there, seven defensive backs. On third and six, O'Toole to the sideline and a little toe tap by Dudek to get in bounds and get the first down. Nice catch, better footwork. Confusion on the Nebraska defense there. They're in man coverage and they let Dudek alone on the sideline, but good throw and catch. Good job getting his feet down in bounds. And a flag down as Illinois tried to speed things up a little bit. And the flags fly. False start of the second time. All 11 players did not come to a full stop. Offense. Five yard penalty. The down remains first. Nebraska is showing a nickel package with five DBs, and they're going to a dime package with six DBs, and then they're going to a dollar package with seven DBs. Good mix on defense because they've been thin at linebacker. First and 15 now after the penalty. O'Toole over the middle. Good catch at the 40-yard line by Martez Barr, and he's a yard shy of an Illinois first down. 14-yard gain, and now you see the pace. Now they're starting to pick it up, which is they're good at that. They're trying to get about 18 seconds in between play. Nice throw over the over the middle. Nice little down and in route. Good job in the pocket by O'Toole. Second down and one. Donovan Young with the spin, and Young gets the first down to the 47. Joshua Kalu on the tackle for Nebraska. He's trying to do a Josh Ferguson spin there. <laughs> Not as quick as Josh, but he is an effective running back. and Allows Josh Ferguson to get a little spell. O'Toole on first down. Pressure comes. Gregory had him, lost him, and got him back. One thing about going fast on offense, you better find Randy Gregory. Sometimes you lose where he is because you're going so fast. But you have to find him somehow, some way. He just said he had a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, and just, that's a mismatch. Need to help him with a running back. Second and 18 to the outside, and Allison. And Allison down at the 44-yard line. Josh Mitchell on the tackle. Just, just trying to get some of the yardage back. Well, here it is right here. It looked initially like it was a face mask. You see he had him around essentially the shoulders around the neck area. Third and 13, airing it to the sideline, looking for Dudek and nowhere to go. Good coverage by Nebraska's defensive backs. That was the same play. They got crossed up before and left Dudek wide open. This time, not, not so. They uh, covered Dudek on that one and covered him well. Lou out there, the true freshman. They have a lot of nice things in the Nebraska coaching room to say about Joshua Kalu and the strides he's made as a true freshman. Really impressed with their secondary. Benoit on to punt. Marnay Pearsonell calling for the fair catch and making it at the 24-yard line. Weekdays, our national college football experts discuss the weekend's biggest stories and the impact they have on the national championship picture. Big Ten football and beyond. Weekdays at noon and again at 7 Eastern on BTN. Let's see if Nebraska can mount a drive here. Get back to their bread and butter run game. Because Illinois is playing a lot of zone all of a sudden. Back to their zone coverage and they're having trouble stopping that run game in zone. On a cross in at I back for Nebraska on first down. Cross. Fighting across the 30 yard line to the 31. Mason Monheim. Another tackle. These Nebraska running backs impressed me so much with their vision and their patience. Letting the blocks develop up front. And then they find that crease at the last second. Excellent vision. But more importantly, excellent patience by the running backs. Two tight ends now for Nebraska. Carter and Cotton. 
A little hesitation and then the surge forward for the first down by Monte Cross. Monheim and Spence combine on the tackle and Cross closing in on a 100 yard night. Getting a lot of time on Monte Cross and that's good. Nebraska's going to need both of them down the road. It's a big long season in the Big Ten. Keeping your star healthy. A lot of games left and Monte Cross is making the most of it right now. On first down, cross again. And Amani cross to the 43-yard line. Carroll Phillips on the tackle. That's got to wear on you. You're a tackler who's been run at all night long, and now you've got a 230-pound guy just rolling at you. Yeah, you, you, you start, you're a linebacker or defensive back, and they're coming right at you every single time. It does wear on you. 19 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown. For Amani Cross, he's one yard off of his career high. He's going to lose yardage here. Great penetration up front for Illinois. There's that double edge blitz by Illinois that I drew earlier. That's been so effective. Here they are. they're coming off both edges. They have every gap accounted for. That's been their number one play in stopping Nebraska all night. It's, they, they need to keep working that defense, although it is susceptible to big play action passes. Rob Bain on the tackle. Showing it again. Armstrong on third down to the edge and a first down. Armstrong able to find Alonzo Moore and move the chain. That was a bullet by Tommy Armstrong. He threw that with authority, steps into his throw. Right on target, had, had tight man coverage. That was a bullet. Winding down this third quarter, Terrell Newby in now at Ivac. Armstrong again to the outside. Kenny Bell with the catch at the Illinois 45 yard line and out of bounds, just shy of the 44. And, and Tommy Armstrong is feeling it right now. That was a nice little quick out. He's a, has good rhythm and timing going right now. His confidence is, is rising with every throw. Has good body language out there. Really feels like a good, like a leader out there of that Nebraska offense. And they are not going to snap it anymore in this third quarter in Lincoln. Fans in the stands at homecoming feeling pretty good about the home team right now as we played three quarters in Lincoln. And the 19th ranked Huskers in control with a 38-14 lead over Illinois in the conference opener for both the fourth quarter straight ahead on BTN. Nebraska tonight in our nearly 13th hour of broadcasting football today on BTN. It has been quite a day on the network and our capper beginning its fourth quarter of play with Nebraska and Illinois. Huskers in a 38-14 lead and Amir Abdullah enjoying another 200-yard night. 208 and three touchdowns for Amir Abdullah. Second and four for Nebraska to start this fourth quarter at the Illinois 45 yard line. Janovich and Cross in the backfield. And here's Imani Cross trying the left side to get to the 43 yard line. Two yard gain. Ward on the tackle. And Imani Cross now one yard from tying his career high in rushing. He had 105 yards last season against Wyoming. Trying to set his career high. Had 115 yards all year coming in. He's had a nice night. Press a nice one-two punch. And even with Newby in there a little bit as a third back. Wester Camp in motion. Armstrong sets up the screen and a little too tall for Monte Cross. That was a good throwaway, though. The Illinois read that one, and, and Illinois had more numbers on defense than Nebraska had blockers. So that, that was a good throwaway there. Smart play by Tommy, not forcing anything. Sam Fultz on to punt. Darius Mosley back deep for Illinois. 
Don't forget this Illinois team is good in the fourth quarter. They scored more points than anybody, any team in the FBS in the fourth quarter with 59. And Fultz another wobbly punt. Bounces at the 20. Takes a good Nebraska hop. And it'll go out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Maybe wasn't the prettiest, but the results were good for Sam Folds, Illinois, starting deep in their own end early in the fourth. Time now for Duluth Training's hardest working player of the game, Randy Gregory. Two and a half sacks, two and a half tackles for loss, four solo tackles. Don't forget a crushing block on the Nate Gary interception return. He's done it all tonight. And they put him at middle linebacker. You see here on a blitz, they moved him all over the defensive front so the Illinois offense can't get a beat on him and put two guys on him. Here he is splitting the double team, putting pressure on the quarter on O'Toole. Nice, nice inside move there. Splitting another double team. He has been all over the field and active for Nebraska. First down and 10 from the 11-yard line. O'Toole handing to Ferguson. And Ferguson picks up a yard to the 12-yard line. And Rebecca Harlow, you've got something to add as far as Randy Gregory's concerned? That's right, Kevin. Well, Nebraska's defense has forced more three and outs than any other team in the FBS. And before the game, I asked cornerback Josh Mitchell why. He said two words, Randy Gregory. He explained the majority of opponents are scared of him. And he said they won't admit it, but they know he's coming on third down. And that's where they're goes he says he literally watches guys screw up their schemes forget their block protections because their focus is looking right at Gregory versus doing their job he certainly looks like a beast down here tonight but interestingly enough he's a quiet guy over on the sideline first team all conference a year ago and he led the conference with 10 and a half sacks pacing very well to start off conference season with two and a half tonight Third down and five. O'Toole to the air, and the pass is incomplete. Wanted bar at the 43-yard line, couldn't get it to him. And now fourth down. This is a late throw on a corner out to Barr. He, O'Toole needs to get it up quicker with more air under through that corner out. That's usually going to be incompletion, sometimes interception. Just do it, do it late. And know the down and distance. You don't need to throw a long pass like that on a third manageable, third six. Look for the underneath, get the first down. Now you're punting again from deep in your own territory. Duvernois to punt to DeMornay Pearsonell and another rocket off the foot of Duvernois. Bouncing out of bounds at the 32-yard line where Nebraska will start first down and 10. 12.50 to play. Huskers with a 38-14 lead. And is brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And by John Deere Gator Utility Vehicles. Own a special edition Midnight Black Gator. Visit your dealer today before they're gone. Celebratory atmosphere. Homecoming in Lincoln. The home team up 38-14 early in the fourth quarter. Armstrong. Scramble that nets positive yardage to the 37 yard line, but a flag thrown as Austin Tightsma finished off Tommy Armstrong. It's going to be against the Huskers. Turn to play, holding offense number 71. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. It's left tackle Alex Lewis called for the hold. The transfer from Colorado has had a nice night, though. There he is at the top of the screen. You see it right there. Just wrap, wrapping around the defender there. Tysma. Got to keep the hands inside at all times. Easy call to make. First and 20 at the 23-yard line. Imani Cross out to the 35-yard line, but a flag down on the near side. Came out, flag came out quick. Five men in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Back it up even more for Nebraska. Sometimes when you go fast and no huddle, you you don't align right. 
And one more on the line of scrimmage. Had too many in the backfield and not enough on the line of scrimmage. Now they're starting to slow it down to get it right. Sixth penalty against the Huskers. First down and 25 back at the 18 yard line. Here's Cross. And Imani Cross picks up four. Mason Monheim on the tackle. This is what offensive coordinator Tim Beck was talking to us the other day, Kevin, saying they, they start fast, but they finish slow. And here's an example of that. You see, Coach Bellini's not real happy right now. But they haven't got to that point where they're finishing games well or fast enough. Here's Tim Beck, Nebraska's offensive coordinator. Had a great conversation with him yesterday, Chuck. Spent some time talking with him about this offense. As we're pleased with where they are right now as Westerkamp works his way up the sideline near the original line of scrimmage. Darius Mosley chasing him out. One of the things that Nebraska's attributed their early success to has been a change in their practice schedule. Both Bo Pelini and Tim Beck talked about how much this has been beneficial to the team. And bottom line is they walk through, they practice hard on Tuesday, Wednesday, walk through on Thursday, then practice hard on Friday, the day before the game, only for an hour. It's the big change in college football. Bo Pelini said he likes it this year because of five straight night games. It's really been beneficial for the Huskers as that short pass out of bounds to Terrell Newby at the 35 yard line well short of the first down. Seemed to be confusion on the signal from the sideline of what play they wanted. Again all head coaches like Coach Pelini here they want good finishes. They haven't had that the way they wanted to consistently on offense. But they're still averaging 45 points a game, which is pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Fultz to punt. Better punt by Fultz this time. Bentley calls for the fair catch, and he'll make it just in front of the 15-yard line. Illinois football, when we return, trailing 38-14. Next Saturday, the Hoosiers look to light up the scoreboard when they host North Texas. Then in prime time, Rutgers welcomes the Wolverines to an Eastern Division showdown next Saturday on BTN. And BTN to go. That Indiana-North Texas game, I know you'll be there for that one, Chuck. And McCarney's North Texas squad going against Indiana. Interesting matchup. I know both head coaches very well. Worked with Kevin Wilson. And I was a player at Iowa when Dan McCarney was the defensive line coach. From the 16 on first down, Riley O'Toole, his pass incomplete. O'Toole going in the direction of Martez Barr, who couldn't pull it in, and it's second down. Nebraska's bringing some safety blitz now. They, they found a blitz that Illinois is not picking up. And forcing Riley O'Toole to throw it quick. After the pump over the middle. Catch is made by Dudek, and Dudek to the 31 yard line has a first down. 15 yard pickup. Gary and Kalu on the tackle. That's why I think Dudek's more effective in that, in that middle of the field area as a slot receiver. That's where he's really good, and has a nice route over the middle. Good throw and catch. From the 31. O'Toole out of the backfield. A little bit of room, but Donovan Young. Shut down by Josh Mitchell on the edge. And Mitchell grabbing his knee and staying down at the 37-yard line. Let's hope he's okay. He is a having a tremendous year, a great leader for Nebraska. Has really emerged as a leader. And this capacity crowd has fallen silent in Lincoln. Josh Mitchell. Had the 57 yard fumble return for a touchdown last week in the Huskers' win over Miami. It had this place buzzing, and now you see the obvious concern teammates and coaches for Josh Mitchell. Josh Mitchell out of Corona, California. And 
this is one that on replay did not look particularly good. While they tend to Josh Mitchell, we're going to step aside in Lincoln, Nebraska, with a 38-14 lead, 9.55 to play. A pretty decent sign for Nebraska. Josh Mitchell on a play that looked very gruesome on the angles we saw. Josh Mitchell did get up, limp his way to the sideline. Hopefully everything's okay for the senior corner. Jonathan Rose in to replace him on second and three at the 38-yard line. Riley O'Toole with good protection, looking deep for Martez Barr in the jump ball, and there's the flag. Byerson Cockrell was the man in coverage of Martez Barr. Pass interference, defense number 28, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And Illinois got lucky because Riley O'Toole underthrew the ball. And what happens is the defensive back did not turn and look at the ball. He's trying to catch up to the wide receiver. Well, there he is turning and looked at the ball. And when you have an underthrow, sometimes you collide and, and draw the pass interference. That was just an underthrow by Riley O'Toole that worked out. At the 48 yard line, first down. Dudek gets away. And this play is stopped. This play never started. There was motion, and it's coming back. Just getting sloppy. Ball start. Offense, number 19. Five-yard penalty. The down remains first. Justin Hardy called for the false start. Illinois trying to go fast here, and then you have an offsides, or never got set, really. Got to get set for one second at the top of the screen. 15. O'Toole back to Dudek again. Dudek going back into the middle of the field. And Dudek with a first down inside the Nebraska 30 to the 29 yard line. Randy Gregory finally catches up after a 24 yard gain. You really don't see that much. He had a chance to get out of bounds. It's just a little flat route, and Nebraska had nobody in the flat on their zone coverage. And Dudek, instead of going out of bounds, got more yardage. Took a couple of shots there, though. As you see, he was trying to get off the field after that. Huskers use a timeout here with 9.32 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Dudek intended to on the Illinois sideline. Came into play tonight second among all Big Ten freshmen in receiving yards. He, and Dudek tonight, four catches for 48 yards. He is fearless, Kevin. And I think he'll learn as time goes on. He may just stay on the sideline. Don't go into all those defenders in the middle of the field. Stay on the sideline. Get what you can get. But he is a fearless freshman. You love the way he plays. Talking with Bill Cubitt, he said he's the shiftiest guy we've got. And a very bright future for the freshman out of Naperville, Illinois. We love those stories. Wasn't highly recruited. Make, making the most of it. First down and 10 at the 29-yard line. O'Toole. Nobody open. And O'Toole just trying to make positive yardage gets a yard to the 28-yard line. Josh Banderas on the tackle. The pressure came from behind from Randy Gregory. They had two guys on Randy Gregory with the tackle and running back. But what happens when you do that is you can't get your running back out in the pass route. So it forces you to only have four wide receivers instead of five. Second and nine at the 28. O'Toole over the middle. And it's incomplete. Intended for Justin Hardy at the Nebraska 20-yard line. Illinois offensive line has given O'Toole some time now. He has plenty of time in the pocket to scan the field and find the open receiver. And they're doing a good job trying to double team Randy Gregory. Although, as I said, with the running back, when you do that, you don't get him out in the, in the pass route. A two of 15 of 30 tonight for 219 yards. On third and nine, had to throw it short and incomplete. Was looking for Donovan Young on the screen. Couldn't get it to him. Nobody open elsewhere. And Riley O'Toole just got rid of it. Smart play. There's, the screen was not there. And Donovan Young is not the screen back that, that Josh Ferguson is. And, and some backs just have a good knack and feel for the screen game and when to get out. And uh, that's Josh Ferguson's play. Fourth down and nine at the Husker 28. O'Toole. Good pocket. 
pocket and he throws the interception. The intended receiver fell down and Daniel Davies' second pick of the night goes out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Just a simple down and in route and the receiver falls down and Davies just, he's right there. He turned into the wide receiver on the play. Easy interception for Davies. One in the end zone earlier, and then this one. Good time in the pocket. Double hitch, and just the receiver fell down. I mean, that's not Riley O'Toole's fault. Receiver fell down, and there's Davey, who turns into the wide receiver and just makes the play. On first down for Nebraska from the 36-yard line. Terrell Newby. A little running room, and Newby... Driven down after a 10-yard gain at the 46 by T.J. Neal. All these running backs want to carry the ball tonight. They're getting, they're getting plenty of action. They're having fun in there. You see Amir getting it. They want some, too. Nebraska doing a nice job. Tim Beck doing a nice job of mixing those backs in all night long. 57 runs tonight for Nebraska. Newby six carries for 22 yards. Armstrong to the air. And Armstrong with a catch made just inside the 30-yard line by Kenny Bell. And Armstrong took a shot, stood in there, strong and tough. Love that. Little play action. Took a shot, delivered the ball a little bit low, but I am really impressed with his. Look at that catch. Use your hands, use your legs. Whatever it takes. I'm impressed with Tommy Armstrong's arm strength. He couldn't get into that throw and still still completed that ball on a skinny post down the field. They're going to look at this one just to make sure that he was able to hold it in. <laughs> right that's, between the legs. That's not how you teach catching the ball. But whatever it takes. Does it hit here? He has his hands underneath it. Nope. I don't think it touched the ground. I think we're good. Well, that's one way to get a 100-yard game. Catching with your thighs. That'll be on a highlight. On the news tonight. Have to be the late news. Big Ten Network late night highlight. Kenny Bell catching with his legs. If it stands, it's his fifth 100-yard receiving game. He'd have five catches for 105 yards. And Kenny Bell with a little smile on his face. Both Bell and Westerkamp came into the game with over 20 yards per catch. After further review, the ruling on the field of a completed catch stands. First down. Always good to have a save by the Bell reference on any broadcast you do. <laughs> Zach and Kelly would be very, very pleased with what Kenny Bell did there. We have a nice drive here by Nebraska. Good mix of plays with a lot of run, obviously. From the 31 on first down, Newby to the 29-yard line. Nebraska has done it on the ground tonight, and for the 50th time, two rushers have rushed for more than 100 yards in a home game for Nebraska. They are 49-0 in the previous 49 times that it's happened. And that record very much looking like it's going to become 50-0 as the Huskers are well on their way to their fifth win of the year. That's an easy formula. They should use that formula every <laughs> game. Why don't you coaches just draw up those plays that get you two rushers for 100 yards each? <laughs> Second and seven at the 28-yard line. Tommy Armstrong on the keep, and Armstrong picking his way forward to the 22-yard line. Taylor Barton on the tackle after the seven-yard run. There are the numbers that we spoke of. Double trouble indeed. Amir Abdullah, 22 carries, 208 yards. Imani Cross, 22 carries. 109 yards. Not a bad night from those two Ibacks. Great balance between them. 22 touches each. I don't know if they planned that, but it's going to really serve them well down the road here 
in this grueling season in the Big Ten. Third down and one at the 22 yard line. Newby again. And Newby with a first down inside the 20. With an update on Nebraska corner Josh Mitchell, let's check in with Rebecca. Well, Kevin, it's his right knee that's being evaluated down here on the sideline. Now, at first, he tested how much weight he could put on the knee, and then he decided to jog up and down the sideline a bit, but he's still limping pretty heavily. He's speaking with the trainers as we speak. No official word yet on his status, but, Kevin, the positive sign is, is that he's on his feet, and he isn't showing much pain other than that limp. Well, that would be good news if Nebraska could keep him in the lineup because of course the Huskers are setting up for a huge showdown next week in East Lansing and a timeout taken by Nebraska a little confusion as they got set for this first down and 10 play we'll take the timeout with them Huskers leading 38 14 we mentioned the showdown in East Lansing next week talk about a highly anticipated matchup Nebraska at Michigan State then the Huskers with a bye before they go on the road to Northwestern host Rutgers and Purdue and November could be a November to remember Wisconsin Minnesota and Iowa I think this West is up for grabs right now this could be a fun race Armstrong on first down he eludes the rush going to run and Armstrong will duck out of bounds at the 16 chased out by T.J. Neal. Nice smart play by Tommy just getting to the outside nothing there stepping up in the pocket and out is the best lane for a quarterback on a scramble. Really like the way he's playing tonight. He had, he had the one mistake early but he is playing well as a quarterback making good decisions. There's a, there's a superstar right there. And the ice bag on the knee that looked like it may have been tweaked a little bit. He did come in after that injury. He had another rush that put him over the 200-yard mark. Amir Abdullah, a little ice on that knee after a 200-yard night. Second and seven. Armstrong, incomplete. Had the rush right in his face again. And it's third down, intended for Tariq Allen. And this is where your Nebraska, again, Head coach Bo Pelini, they want to finish strong going into that big game next week at Michigan State. It's always a good feeling when you finish strong, and he wants this drive to get punched in for, for seven. Doesn't want to settle for three. That's one of the things they've been trying to work on is their fourth quarter. On third down. Armstrong to Wester Camp, and he'll walk in for the touchdown. A flag is down back at the 11. Best interference, offense number seven. 15 yard penalty, repeat third down. Yeah, it looked funny down here at the bottom of the screen. It look, looked like a little pick play against man to man. You'll see it down here at the bottom. Watch number seven. Yeah. Little little pick. Ah, he stuck his arms out. So you don't want to stick your arms out on the pick play. You got to keep your arms inside. And they just it was a slight pick play. Let's put it that way. But they caught it. That'll never be a pick play to a quarterback. No. no. <laughs> you have to be a good actor in there and not, and not show those hands. Third and 22, Westerkamp was the motion man. Armstrong all day to throw. Open and incomplete. Tariq Allen had it right in his hands at the seven-yard line, and Allen's going to limp to the sidelines. And that was just a missed throw. Threw it behind him. Threw behind Allen there. Tommy just didn't let it go quick enough, and he didn't point that left toe outside his target. Just a little bit late through behind him. That was just a mechanical issue. Made the right read. It's really the only missed throw he's had with a guy that wide open. Huskers are going to go for it on fourth down and 22 at the 31-yard line. Armstrong under pressure. Armstrong keeps his back.
play very early. How he got out of this. Up and out again. Good stiff arm right there. Great balance. Stays to the outside. That's all Tommy Armstrong right there. Good stiff arm right there. And then the balance. First and goal at the six yard line. Terrell Newby. They're going to end up getting to their scoring average of 45 a game. And that's a drive that you need in the fourth quarter. Again, going into next week against Michigan State. Just gives, adds more confidence to your team, to your offense. And an injured Illinois defensive end is Ward. See, right in the middle of your screen. Right in the middle of your screen. Oh, there he is getting rolled up right there. That's a tough play in the trenches. Kevin, that's why I play quarterback. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want any part of that. are at that 45 point scoring average with 458 remaining in the fourth quarter. Huskers 45, Illinois 14. Huskers four minutes and 58 seconds away from going to 5 and 0 oh for just the second time in Bo Pelini's tenure as head coach. They went 5 and 0 oh to start the 2010 football season. Kickoff for Brown and the Huskers. Bentley from the three. D'Angelo Bentley breaks one tackle. He's explosive, but he's caught from behind at the 28-yard line. And now for more on Amir Abdullah and the night he's had, we'll throw back downstairs to Rebecca Hart. The man, the myth, the legend that is Amir Abdullah these days, guys. But I asked Jake Cotton why he deserves to be in that Heisman conversation outside of the obvious that we see all the time on the field. Cotton tells me his ability to keep the whole team on the same page is incredible and inspiring. He said that every Monday he has a text message sent out to the entire team with what needs to be accomplished that week. Cotton described it as a weekly reset button. This week it was block out all outside noise. Kevin Chuck is certainly fitting because this team believes they can run the table. The closer they get, the more the noise. Well, they'll certainly have their chance to prove themselves next week in East Lansing against the Michigan State team that looks like they have found their groove on both sides of the football. As we look at the recent Heisman Trophy winners and quarterback Chuck Long, this has really come around to now almost a quarterback award. It's going to be tough for Amir Abdullah to win as a running back, or is it? Well, the reason why it's been a quarterback work is all the spread offenses and everybody's throwing the football and these quarterbacks are putting up gaudy numbers. But you're seeing a resurgence of some option game and rushing the football this year, which could mean Amir Abdullah having a chance at it, which I believe he should. Not only is he great on the field, but he is great off the field. I heard a speech that he made at the Big Ten luncheon earlier this summer mm -hmm. and had no notes, well spoken. I was mesmerized by his speech, how classy he was and is. Just an outstanding citizen off the field, everything you want in a football player in your program. Incomplete on third and ten, intended for Malik Turner as fourth down. Elio Tool. Got thrust into the starting role tonight with the injury to Wes Lunt. And, and he's been hit a few times yeah. tonight, Kevin, and he looks, he's looking like it. Got to pick that body language up for your teammates, though. You're, you're an older player in the system. Stay up for your teammates. You'll probably get a chance again. Good morning, Pearson L. 40 yard line brought down and Nebraska back to work on offense. 
Coming up, the final drive brings you all the highlights from this game and the entire day in the Big Ten. The final drive following our game on BTN. Now for Illinois, about to go to three and two on the year. You look ahead with this Illinois team, and assuming they can get West Lunt back and the offense can gear up, it's it's a tough road to hoe for Coach Beckman's squad, but they do have a potent offense. They do, and they have a chance against Purdue next week. I don't think Purdue's a very good football team. They have a lot of work to do, and they have Purdue at home. First out and 10, new quarterback Riker Fife hands it off to Jordan Nelson. And Nelson to the 43-yard line. There's a good look at Riker Fife, the 6'2 sophomore from Grand Island, Nebraska. He really impressed a lot of folks with his work this fall and this past spring. And a guy, Bo Pelini and Tim Beck both feel very confident in if they needed to lean on him at some point this season. And he'd like to get some throws for him right now just to get his feet wet a little bit, throwing the football. There's Nelson, a big hole for Jordan Nelson. And Nelson to the 45 of Illinois. It's a first down. Feshel on the tackle for the Illini. All the running backs get in on the action for Nebraska tonight. They all want a piece of the action, but it'd be nice to get five some throws in this game, although they're up pretty good. Just get a couple short throws if you can. Instead of just run the ball all the time to run the clock out, which is what Bo Pelini is probably going to favor doing. First down and 10 after the 13-yard run by Nelson. He gets the carry again. Nelson with a little running room. And Nelson inside the 30 and down to the Illinois 28-yard line. 17 yards for Nelson as Zane Petty makes the tackle. Just all, it's just the same play they've been running all night. Inside zone, outside zone, just window dressing, different way, different looks, and the same play. Their offense is very potent at Nebraska. They, they are hard to defend and will be hard to stop all year long. They'll be going up next week against a Michigan State team that certainly has shown a potent offense as well this year. Nelson again with the carry, caught from behind by Monheim. 23-yard line. I like what Monheim. He's he's progressed since last year as well. Gotten stronger. Starting to make more plays at that linebacker position. But the Illinois defense is still a work in progress. They have a ways to go. They have to create an identity. Nebraska's had over 600 yards already on the night. 616 for you. Folks who have great attention to detail. Nelson trying to get to the outside, and Nelson's going to lose yardage this time to the 25 yard line. But one thing Illinois has improved on are, are more tackles for loss, like you see there. They hardly had any last year, and they're getting their hands on the ball when it's in the air a lot more this year. Those are two significant improvements for the Illinois defense that they can move forward with. Third down and eight, under two minutes to go in Lincoln. Just playing some clock ball here and using all the play clock they can. Fife in trouble and he's sacked. Illinois able to get the sack from Ernest Thomas, his second sack of the year, and it's fourth down. Well, right now, your coach Beckman for Illinois, you wanted to see your guys play to the whistle, play to the end of the game, and they're doing that at, right now. They're, no one's giving up out there. They're playing hard still on defense, and that's what you want to see as a head coach right now. The game's over, but are your kids playing hard still for you? Fourth down and 13, and Nebraska going to go for it here on fourth. Fife will run. Fife got a block. Riker Fife going to be stopped short of the first down. Bentley and Petty keep him from moving the chains, and it'll be Illinois football. Well, the Huskers doing it on the ground tonight. 45 points, the most points scored in Big Ten play churning out over 600 yards and there's a flag down after that One, play 66 offense that penalty is declined first down Illinois so 
have no impact on that. Tommy Armstrong and Amir Abdullah happy with their night. I know you'll talk about it a lot this week, Chuck, on BTN, but any early thoughts on the matchup in East Lansing next week between Nebraska and Michigan State? Well, I th still think Michigan State's the best team in the Big Ten right now. However, Nebraska is closing fast. So that is indeed a great matchup for next week. It'll be fun to watch. Nebraska with this game in between a very emotional matchup last week against Miami and then the look ahead to Michigan State next week. Bo Pelini's going to be pleased, Chuck, with the way his team took care of business tonight as Dudek gets the first down for Illinois. Absolutely. It might come down to special teams playing that game to be the deciding factor next week. I think Nebraska's defense has improved immensely from last year, but I still think they're got a little ways to go a little improvement yet I think Michigan State has the better defense at this point in time well Dudek had it and then knocked out of his hands by Kalu <laughs> coach Pelini still coaching to the end wants everybody wants finish well regardless of the score Amir <laughs> having some fun <laughs> with the fans. Over the middle, Dudek with the catch, got a block, and then he tripped up. He had a lot of room to run, and down at the Nebraska 39-yard line, a 28-yard gain for Dudek. Dudek is good in the middle of the field. He is shifty and slippery, and you lose him in coverage. O'Toole lifts up the middle. with his first sack of the year. And that is how Nebraska ends their conference opener for 2014. The Huskers hold home field advantage, taking care of Illinois 45 to 14 tonight. That's going to do it from Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska defeats Illinois 45 to 14 for Chuck Long. I'm Rebecca Harlow, and I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long. Right now, let's get it back to our Big Ten studios. Join Dave Revson and Mike Hall. So long from Lincoln.